No one has other Middle Eastern friends. I'm it. Everyone's token Middle Eastern friend. You speak Muslim? No, that's a religion. We made it here as refugees. A lot of persecution, displacement. I have an Iraqi background. Maybe not racism. Stereotypes being pushed on to me. Persecution and killing. Always siren, there's bombing. They used to shout, cursed be the Christ. We were considered to be infidel and clean. I'm gonna put the cross on. I believe in Jesus. I was scared. I was very afraid. When the bus moved, in Baghdad, my father was crying, so it's difficult. We are a family in Christ. We want to honor God and give Him honor through all we do. Love hanging out, love watching movies. We're a big movie family. Home cooked meals, um, yummy food. Love helping my mom in the kitchen for sure. Oh, yeah. Wasn't my favorite thing as a kid, but now I love helping her. Enjoy serving with my church and spending time with family. Enjoy getting together with them, trying out different coffee shops. Big coffee girl. Yeah, that's what I would say. We just love hanging out. <laughs> Farah has, she's been very calm. She's so gentle. Farah. I have a master's degree. She loves people and spend time with people. She's a social bee. I am a speech language pathologist. I work in outpatient neuro with adults with various neurological disorders. Love what I do there. Faith is the same. She loves being around friends. Faith is more outspoken personality. Loves to sing to the Lord. I'm currently a senior, so I'm finishing up my time in college, which is bittersweet. I'm a communication studies major, so love all things just creative, arts, communicating, organizing, event planning. I love it all. When we came to this country, we didn't know anything. We have to start from zero especially with the language, it was very difficult. But we had people standing with us, friends, family, just help us, gave us jobs that we didn't even know how to <laughs> work, taught us how to work. So when now we see people struggling, we feel for them because we've been through that same situation. We made it here as refugees. So you, when you see a new refugee, you stand by them, you help them, you encourage them. I established a nonprofit organization called World Refugee Care because we come from that background, so we're trying to duplicate what God did to us in people's lives so they can see hope, they can see Christ and get saved. Why? They're Americans. We did not impose our thoughts and ways on them. I want to impose the Christian culture above my background culture or this culture. Our culture, we stay home until we are married. You want to go away to school? and our culture, you can't go away to school. You have to stay home. We have people from church like, oh, you, don't, you allow your daughter to marry American, not Arab? Are you okay with that? I'm like, yes, if it's from the Lord. If it, that's what they want, yeah. Emotionally, we're attached to our kids, but at the end, it's their choices in life, and we just have to pray for them and respect their choices and let them be who God intended for them to be. I went to public school. I didn't really have Christian friends in school growing up. My parents would always encourage me to find Christian friends at school. I was always like the, a good kid, you know, I wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to do well in school. From middle school to almost the end of my time in high school, it just felt like I really had nobody. Thankfully, I had the Arabic church and people who understood the culture and the choices I was making. I'm so thankful for loving parents that would just make life still so fun and would offer to take me out to get ice cream or whatever it was. I'm definitely proud of where I come from. I'm proud of my background. My sister and I are the first generation that's been able to stay in their home country their whole lives. There's been a lot of displacement, a lot of persecution, a lot of movement. I know that I come from a long line of very resilient people who stood firm in their, in their faith. Like any first generation American, there's a lot of unique 
things that we experience that our peers don't. America is a very individualistic culture and society, and you're your own person, even from the time that you're really young, and then you're 18, and then you're on your own. Our culture is very family-oriented, and it's very group-oriented, and so I am one of four for the foreseeable future until, you know, I'm married and have my own family and that kind of thing that affects, you know, how you spend your time. I didn't really spend as much time with, with school friends outside of school. I was hanging out with my family. What was considered the norm around me wasn't my norm and I always wanted it to be. So it was definitely challenging to make friends and keep friends because it was like, oh, Faith probably can't go, so we're just all gonna invite her. I'm gonna go hang out with my family on a Friday night. I'm so thankful because my parents really push to understand the culture and they're not just stuck on like, no, this is our culture, this is what's right. I've never really felt singled out for my, for my race. I don't know if you would consider it racism, but definitely just stereotypes being pushed on to me. If I would tell someone that I was, my parents are from the Middle East, I have an Iraqi background, immediately, are you Muslim? You speak Muslim? <laughs> that really, that got me. I was like, no, that's a religion. I'm pretty much everyone's token Middle Eastern friend. Like, no one has other Middle Eastern friends. I'm it. So what they know about our culture and our language and our food, even our faith, you know, it's very, we're very, very niche too because we're Christians from the Middle East and that absolutely blows people's minds. Hey, um, you know, Jesus himself was from the Middle East. I don't know why you're surprised that they're Middle Eastern Christians. So maybe not racism, but more like a little bit of ignorance, honestly. I would stop telling people where I was from, what my background was, because I didn't want to be associated with something that I wasn't. And so I just, I stopped telling people. As I grew up and as I started going to college and people started to be like, where are you from? You look different. And it was a positive thing. I became so open to just sharing where my parents were from, what my food is like, what my family is like, what my church is like, and filled with so much encouragement of like, that is so cool, rather than, oh, like really? Educating people who haven't had any exposure to someone like me and my family, that's more so been what I've <laughs> encountered. I am very proud of their story because it's just the Lord's hand and the Lord's kindness and His faithfulness, his love is still reaching and after so many years reached my mom and dad and their parents and their parents and their parents. I was born in Iraq, Baghdad and uh, my grandparents are from Turkey in 1915. There was persecution and killing and it's well known documented that up to three million people were killed during this massacre. It's called the Armenian Genocide, but it is in reality, it's Christian Genocide. Basically, whoever is a Christian were persecuted, were killed. The one who was well-to-do went to the West and came to America. And the one who was just simple farmers fled to the neighboring nations. The grandparents fled to Iraq. My parents were born in Iraq, and I was born in Iraq as well. You can say three generations born in a place and dying in another place. Three generation fleeing because of persecution, wars, and turmoil. I am from Iraq, Baghdad. It was difficult for us to grow up in a war. Always there's siren, there's bombing. As much as I remember since I was 10 years old until I left Iraq, I've been uh, in the war. So it was very difficult for us. During the Iran war, I was in school and there's a huge um, bombing and the whole like a glass window fell down. I was right there, so God protected me. And then I never went back to that school. We have to move to different cities safer until the war ended. I was religious. I did not skip on Sunday going to uh, grow up Catholic. I didn't skip the church. I feared the Lord, but I didn't know him. I feared the Lord, but I didn't have peace. So basically I was a nominal Christian. I have a Catholic background. I grew up going to church. We fear the Lord. We were raised to love God and loving parents. We are four sisters and one brother in the family. We lived in an area that is, uh, we were minority as a Christian. So we were considered to be infidel and clean. 
They used to shout, cursed be the Christ. Our house used to get stoned. We fixed the glass and then breaking again, fixed the glass, broken again. The teacher picked on me and uh, I started getting beat in, in the school because the teacher realized I don't attend the religious class for Muslims and I'm a Christian. So he started picking on me and he started demanding of me things like um, got a haircut on a Monday and Monday there is no hairdressers. <laughs> and the next day I go and then he would call me up in front of all the students, discipline me. Even if the government is not for discrimination or any of these things, but the people education, thinking, background, mind, set is all the religious that is tell them that we are infidels and unclean and we deserve to die and uh, persecuted. So as a kid, you have an adult teacher picking on you. I realized that um, I'm different. I realized that our faith is different than the people around me. But that made me more attached to my faith and to who I am instead of feeling I want to compromise. I want to put the cross on and I'm going to show it to the people around me. I believe in Jesus. You never wound people with aggression. You never wound people with darkness. You wound them with light and love. In school, maybe in my class, I'm one of two just Christian girls in the class. It was hard for us to just be Christian there. Sometimes we have to read things from the Quran, you know, when, when we're like reading one of the subjects. I didn't want to leave. I was attached to my family. I have two brothers left, they wanted to leave. Their character is independent. When I was 18, I didn't want to leave. I like my parents, I like my mother's cooking. I didn't want to go to the unknown. I didn't want to flee. Even though the situation is dire, the war with Iran has started already two years old. We've seen uh, some uh, planes flying over us. We've seen missiles hitting the neighborhood, refinery and electric stations uh, by F-4 from Iran. This is what is comfort zone, let's say. That was my comfort zone, is the family. We didn't want to live there anymore because everyone left. My aunts, my uncles, we were the only one left there. My brother also, he was older than us, so he has to escape, because if not, he would go to war. We were planning to leave way before, but when my mom and dad was there to get their visa to leave Iraq, the Gulf War started, so we have to wait and go through the whole war. It was difficult, very hard. And then when we were in that city, it was very close to the Saddam airport. That's where the most bombing happened at that time with the Gulf War, so it was not good. <laughs> I was scared. I was very afraid of losing my family, I'm gonna be alone if everybody dies, so it was not easy for us. I could have fled in the summer of 81, and, and then as soon as I tried, it was the travel was closed. But in the spring of 82, it was open, and the family said, you must leave for your sake. So, <clears throat> and, um, when the bus moved in Baghdad, my father was crying, so it's difficult. Uh, it took uh, 10 years before I saw them. Stop killing of Christians, start discriminating against Christians. Saddam didn't let anyone leave. If you get caught, they can hang you. Secret Service slap them around. We're gonna kill you all. We were crying the whole time. I was in turmoil. And you created me in a place that have turmoil. Why didn't you create me somewhere else? Why do we have to go through this? Why the whole world is in a peace? And I was really scared. Struggle to be alive, to be with the family, and struggle with the Lord.
God is love and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all loving, but that He actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages, free of charge. And a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to feed starving children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.